Hi everyone, my name is attorney Alina Kachian of Alina Kachian Consulting, a law practice focused on uh, assisting FDA regulated companies and chemical companies with regulatory matters. Today is Saturday, April 11th, around 3 p.m. now. I am in Burlington, Massachusetts, right outside of Boston, and here to talk to you about the uh, recent issue of Tiny Note Tuesday, which came out um, the last Tuesday of March. And it is a Tiny Note Tuesday is a free monthly newsletter arriving in your in inbox the last Tuesday of every month. There's It's usually revolved around a feature regulatory topic as well as some other information about the firm and other uh, educational resources. If you'd like to subscribe to the newsletter and haven't already, the link is below. Uh, all you need to do is submit your email address. So to jump right into it, I actually uh, received some very constructive criticism, and I appreciate that very much, uh, about making these videos a little shorter because right now people have a lot going on with working from home and you know having their families and lots to do. So I thought I was being good by keeping it under 10 minutes, but I'm actually gonna try to cut it down even more. Um, and with that said, I'll just jump right into the March issue and recap everything that was written there. Um, and also the link is below if you wanna read the, the actual written version of this um, newsletter. All right, getting right into it. So the feature regulatory topic in March was FDA Form 483. If you are in the FDA regulated industry, especially pharmaceuticals, you are probably familiar with FDA Form 483. You've probably heard about it, read about it, um, but I still get a lot of questions about it. So I just wanted to go back to the basics here and explain what it is um, and, and w w what exactly one can do uh, in response to it. So FDA Form 483, uh, if an FDA investigator goes in to do an inspection at a facility, uh, they will generally, at the end of the inspection, hand a Form 483 to the responsible person at the firm if during the time of the inspection, they observed uh, what they deemed to be violations of the FDA, or more specifically violations of the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, or another act of the FDA. And they will note these inspectional observations in this Form 483, and they will go over what exactly they meant um, by these violations and uh, explain it to the firm. And now, the options that the firm has after that is to put together a corrective action plan addressing the inspectional observations. And this cor uh, corrective action plan will be submitted to the FDA in response to this Form 483 within a specific amount of time. Now, once this corrective action plan is submitted, uh, the firm does actually have to put actions or um, uh, measures in place to make sure that these corrective actions are implemented. And then they have to have proof thereof, proof of the implementation uh, for the FDA. And in the event that the FDA comes back and does another inspection or reinspection, the firm needs to be able to provide proof uh, showing that the corrective action plan was in fact implemented. All right, um, and if you would like to read more information on FDA Form 483, uh, the link is below as well. The next section talked about educating yourself. Now, this is a section about a particular resource that I think is helpful to the industry, um, whether it's something that I came across that month or something that is uh, relevant and people should educate themselves on. And this month, or in March, I devoted it to the Tusca CDR 2020 submission. Uh, if you are in an EPA regulated, um, company or handle EPA regulated products, then you will have heard of TUSCA, the Toxic Substances Control Act. Now, CDR is a, a chemical data reporting, which is done, um, last time it was done in 2016, and this time it's due in 2020. Um, and it is a reporting that one has to submit if they handle chemicals that are subject to Tusca. So I included a link to that below as well. Um, I highly recommend that you, uh, if you are not familiar with Tusca already, you really uh, educate yourself quickly because the Tusca CDR 2020 reporting is right around the corner um, and firms really should be preparing for it right now. Okay, um, what's new at the practice? So at the practice, uh, 
checklists. Um, I personally like checklists anytime I am, you know, starting something new or even um, trying to wrap my head around something. I always find checklists and templates very helpful. So I've put together some checklists and templates about uh, common questions that come up uh, that people come to me for. And I've included those checklists and templates as well, which you can browse through on my website and the link to that is below as well. If you have any questions on those, you can email and ask about them. And what's new with me outside of the practice? Well, with the COVID-19 situation, everyone's schedule has been, I'm sure, turned upside down. And so um, I've been trying to take the opportunity to do things that I haven't had a chance to do. And so one of the major things I did is I started a blog on my website and where I post about various different topics from regulatory to COVID-19. Um, and the link to those posts is below. Now, the cool thing about it is I do allow for for comments so I encourage you to read the post leave comments um, suggestions about what you, you would like to read uh, about and I can definitely post about that as well so a few of the recent posts one is called coronavirus how I'm staying sane safe and productive it's more about my own transition into our new normal um, and then I have one about regulations and firearms and about um, compliance and the COVID, our COVID-19 situation. So I deal a lot with regulatory compliance in my practice, but um, I thought it would be interesting to write about compliance in the COVID-19 situation as well, kind of linking the two together. So I hope you uh, read the blog, uh, read the posts. Again, the link to that is below and please, I encourage you to comment. I'd love to hear from you. That is all I have. I kept it um, just under seven minutes. Um, so thank you. Take care. Stay safe. And I'll talk to you soon.